Medical advice on TV. How much of what you hear on TV when it comes to medical advice is actually rooted in some sort of truth? That doesn't mean, for example, what you may hear on the morning or evening or afternoon news and or your drug ad uh, is not well-meaning, but is it actually based on data? That's the key, or citation. Now, we looked at the Dr. Oz show and we looked at the doctors. And we compared them both to see which one had the best supporting data. And you'll be surprised at the information you find that the research discovered. Now, the research article, and this is what's called the citation. The citation title is, Televised Medical Talk Shows, What They Recommend and the Evidence Support the Recommendation, a Prospective Observational Study, published December 17, 2014, in the British Medical Journal. Now, the reason that citation is important is because you get an opportunity to look at the information that I read. You may see a different angle on it, but at least you, we have information that we're basing these judgments upon. I'm just not making up this data. And the reason it's important is this. When you look at, let's say, just these two TV shows, The Doctors and Dr. Oz, you have 2.9 million viewers per day on The Dr. Oz Show, or watching The Dr. Oz Show, and 2.3 million viewers per day watching The Doctors. That's a lot of people running to the medical professional saying, hey, why aren't you recommending this and why aren't you recommending that? And your poor medical professional has to be running around the office, going online, going on the internet, checking for drug reactions, any studies to support uh, the health benefits to you, his patient or her patient. So let's look at this as a whole. This is what they did. The British Medical Journal researchers, they looked at basically 160 of the recommendations that were made. These 160 recommendations were made in 80 shows, 40 shows from Dr. Oz and 40 shows from the doctors. What they also did as far as evidence, they had to eliminate what's called expert advice. Obviously because the doctors and Dr. Oz and are claiming themselves to be experts, that doesn't count as data. What they want to see is actual well-cited clinical studies. And also too, what they did is they gave each one of the research teams one hour to find any information that could support the claims being made on the show The Doctors or the show The Dr. Oz Show. So this is what they discovered. All right, of the Dr. Oz show, 46% of what he says, according to the British Medical Journal, is actually supported by clinical studies. 46%. Wow, that means over half of what he's saying is not. But here it becomes a little bit more of an edge to it. Let's look at the doctors. The doctors, 63% of what they say is supported by clinical evidence. Now, that 63% still beats Dr. Oz, but guess what? Really, still, both shows, pretty poor rating altogether. You would expect the researchers or the research teams to get them close to at least 95 to 100%, given some room for error. But no, 37% of the time, the doctors are recommending things based upon no clinical evidence, not just to one small group of people. The recommendations the researchers looked at from the British Medical Journal was when they recommended it to everybody. And these guys are some of the most influential people in the medical world. So the recommendations hold weight, regardless of whether they're backed by any sort of data or not. Now let's move a little forward. Let's look at stuff they may have said that was conflicted with popular information or popular data or research. Dr. Oz, 15% of what he says can be shot down by clinical evidence. The doctors, 14% of what they say can be shot down by clinical evidence. And now we go to fairy tale land, where basically the recommendations that they make are not based upon any evidence one way or the other. Say it's made up, I don't know. According to the British Medical Journal, what they said was, it's a recommendation like if someone has the flu, get plenty of rest, uh, don't overexert yourself. It's common belief, but it's not supported by data. So sometimes the recommendations can be well-meaning, but still not supported by any clinical evidence. Dr. Oz, 39% of what he, the show says, I'm not gonna blame it on him because sometimes they have staff that does the research for them, 39% have no supporting data. Just made up. Or how would you describe it? Just assumed. Of uh, the doctors, 24% has no supporting data to support their claims. That's, it means, that means nothing. 
nothing, no data whatsoever. Remember, the British Medical Journal had two independent researchers. They gave them an hour each for each recommendation. And these researchers worked separately from each other, trying to find information to support their claims. So keep that in mind. You have these medical TV shows all because it's said on TV, just like it was said on the internet. It just can't be said without a citation to follow it. It's real important. And it goes a long way too, because if you have to bring information to your doctor, you can show the citation to him and it could save a lot of time as far as that medical professional, sorry, not just him, him or her, that medical professional doing that research for your own benefit to make sure it doesn't contraindicate with any medications, whether it's something that you can actually utilize with a possible uh, health condition that may not be uh, uh, suitable to whatever the recommendations are. So, also too, a little bit more disturbing, out of all the recommendations made, out of 160, only four times the conflict of interest mentioned. Now that's important, that's between the two shows. So that doesn't mean, do the doctors profit from the recommendations? Does Dr. Oz profit some way directly or indirectly from the recommendations? That's important because conflict of interest is something which keeps the slate clean, so to say. So we know, and sometimes too, they can have the best meaning in the world, but that conflict of interest where they're gonna make some money from the recommendations could sometimes cloud their judgment. Again, Ralph Turciano giving you a cited study on the believability of some of your more popular TV talk show, medical talk shows. Thanks once again, and I'll talk to you later.